What's up, Snow Tracks Nation? Luke here, and I am in Valcourt, Quebec, once again at the Germain Bombardier Ingenuity Museum, and I will be again joined by Robin Martel, Product Manager for Skidoo Snowmobiles. And today we're going to be taking a more in-depth look at some of the most popular 2022 models and answering questions that have been submitted by you, our viewers. The sled we're looking at right now is the 2022 MXZ XRS 850 with Smart Shocks. Let's get started. Now everybody knows the XRS. It's, I mean, it's an iconic vehicle and this XRS 850 um, is designed for the hardest core trail rider out there, a guy who can handle the biggest bumps, a guy who wants to go as fast as possible, no matter the conditions. You've got RASX front end, new front suspension, you've got R-Motion X in the rear, you've got, you know, riser bars, the whole nine yards, stronger chassis, stronger suspension. This is basically one step below the RS race sled and it's for everybody. But for 2022, it comes with one very interesting new feature, smart shocks. Yep, exactly. And uh, this is a new feature. Uh, we're really excited about introducing that. And uh, uh, you know, to top it off, uh, we have also the reinforced running boards on that sled. The smart shocks are really taking this sled to the next level. And basically what it does, uh, this is a, an electronically uh, controlled suspension, so fully automated um, and really, really taking all the input from the track, taking all the input from the rider, uh, analyzing those conditions. Uh, of course, it's done with an onboard computer unit and uh, we have five, uh, five sen sensors basically that are feeding that system. Uh, positioned on the front shocks, on the on the, the rear shocks, and also on uh, on the handlebar controls. So all that input, 50 times per second, taking that input, that rider input, that trail input, and adjusting the suspension, the dampening of the suspension to really give it uh, the ultimate riding experience. And uh, the three modes that we have on on the uh, smart shock system: comfort mode. So when you're riding basically starting off or uh, you know you want something a little bit more relaxed coming coming back from a, a whole day of riding when you you know you, you want to wind wind things down comfort mode is a perfect way to go then you have the sport mode which is a little bit more uh, more sporty of course and the sport plus which really uh, is the hardest or the stiffest uh, suspension uh, uh, calibration that's offered on the system giving a lot of benefits to the rider, of course. Uh, and on the MXZ package, I mean, like you said, this trail is all about uh, eating up trails, giving the best performance uh, to the rider. This is a light, lightweight sled, of course. We only have uh, two strokes, so it's all about lightweightedness, a little bit of that uh, snow cross heritage in there, so making the sled a total, total beast on, on the track and a lot of fun to ride. In terms of ride quality, can you say that comfort would be, say, as smooth as an enduro or something along those lines it like would be maybe a little bit smoother but yeah the, that would be or soft the, maybe yeah that would be a fair i think a fair comparison okay and then just on the extreme end of it is sport plus even firmer than your typical xrs or is it about the same as a, a typical xrs yeah it will be a little bit firmer and and again it's going to be adaptive, so it might be firmer or it might, you know, the dampening will vary, of sure. course, depending on the setting. So, and there's always a range. So, uh, you know, depending on the setting that you choose for the riding style that you want, uh, you will get a lot of, uh, you know, basically a lot of, uh, of, of feedback right. from, from, from the calibration. Very interesting. Um, tell me about some of the benefits of smart shocks to the actual rider on the snow using the snowmobile. Well, the, the main benefits is basically that you can adjust the suspension on the fly. Even, even when, when you're riding and as we ride, we'll encounter uh, different trail conditions. So you have the ability to switch it from comfort, sport, sport plus as you go along. I can give an example when we're coming in, let's say uh, cornering in and we want to really uh, have, uh, you know, maximum, uh, maximum adrenaline feel coming in fast, putting it on sport mode plus is really going to minimize the uh, ski lift and give, give you that much more control coming into a, a sharp turn or things like that. 
And then riding along the day, if you're, you know, if you're getting a little bit more tired, uh, you're getting a little bit more fatigued, then you'll, you'll want to revert back to the sport or the comfort mode. Comfort mode is, is when you try the extremes, you really understand where this suspension can go, you know, from one extreme to the next. And that's, that's what I recommend uh, customers buying this do, because then you can really appreciate the full, the full spectrum of that, uh, of uh, the calibration of that, that suspension. Right. And with the comfort mode, of course, uh, you know, after a hard day of riding, always appreciate it to, to be a little bit more uh, relaxed mode riding. But even in comfort mode, when you go into a corner, it's still going to give you yeah. higher compression damping on the outside to stop body roll. Maybe not as aggressively as in sport, but it is still doing that yes. at a lower level. Yes. Interesting. Okay. And the other thing about the comfort mode, when you're putting it in the most, uh, let's say, uh, softer, uh, softer uh, calibration uh, position, and you're riding in on really bumpy trails, taking those really fast, I mean, you can you can get a lot more speed going from uh, from the vehicle, and uh, uh, you can you know you can take it to places where in the stiffest setting you might you might uh, you might slow down a little bit on the throttle. Let's jump into maybe a bit of the history of Smart Shock, and, and by that I mean, can you talk to me about the market factors and the market research that you did, and, and just generally speaking, why develop this technology and bring it to snowmobiles? Why, why do that? What, what suggested this would be a good idea? Yeah, we have, uh, we've seen that technology, of course, uh, in, in our side-by-side -side vehicles, and uh, there's a lot of benefits, of course, to that technology. When we started to develop it, of course, in partnership with, our, uh, with uh, KYB, which is our, uh, our shock supplier, uh, we, we were seeing a lot of benefits, of course, bringing that into snowmobile just because of the type of terrain we have and giving the customers the ability really to have that on-the-fly adjustment. I mean, you know, this is a, this is a very unique feature, uh, giving a lot of uh, a lot of benefits to the customers uh, being able to do that. And, uh, you know, during the during the design process, you know, there was a lot of work done into the calibration. The engineering team did a really uh, an awesome job, uh, you know, picking the right settings and calibrating it to have, uh, you know, the best result, the best overall uh, ride uh, on the snowmobile. So yeah, it's been you know it's been a, a great introduction for us, and we've had a lot, a tremendous, tr tremendous amount of response and uh, positive uh, reviews from our from our customers. So generally speaking, what you're saying is that you saw such huge benefits on the off-road dirt side that it was kind of like a no-brainer to bring this onto snow, knowing that the terrain is very similar. If it works here chances are it's going to work here and give you the same benefits. Yeah, exactly. And, and having the ability basically to really adjust it, like I was saying, you know, as you're riding. Yeah. So that's, you know, totally, uh, a, a totally a big, big de benefit for customers. Yeah. Well, we joke a lot around the office about do people really get off when the trail goes from smooth to rough and go and adjust their clickers before they ride that section. Yeah. And then when it turns smooth again, get off and adjust <laughs> them again. People don't do that. Yeah, exactly. But with this system, they don't have to. It's yeah. just going to work for all conditions. Um, that brings me actually to another question that I've got. Um, I know the system doesn't have the functionality now, but do you see in the future the ability to adjust the system by the user, say, take the base setting of comfort and make it just a little bit stiffer or take Sport Plus and make it just a little bit softer? Is that something you think customers would want? Well, that's a really good question. And uh, uh, definitely, uh, I mean, we're, we're all ears. Of course, we're, we're just introducing this, getting market feedback. I think that point is uh, very, very interesting and definitely something that we could look into. I mean, it's, it's a, uh, you know, it's, we have three, three base calibrations, but mm -hmm. that doesn't mean uh, in the future that uh, depending on the feedback we get from customers and new technologies coming in, some things that we could look into to give more flexibility to customers, but uh, you know, right now, uh, uh, you know, this is this is uh, the the base that we're offering, and there is no there is no possibility of adjusting it or fine tuning it right now at this point. But in the future, it's not to say that's not possible. Exactly. Yeah, we're not we're not closing the page on anything. We're always uh, open to feedback and uh, analyzing basically uh, the opportunities. Awesome. A question that Mark and I have, my dad and I, we were talking at dinner the other day, and we were curious. Smart Shocks is listed as a semi-active suspension system. 
What would a fully active suspension system do? What would the differences be? Well, uh, in, in a snowmobile, like, uh, basically there's not really any uh, fully active uh, systems out there, but if it would be a fully active system, it, the, the sled would need to be equipped with, uh, with cameras and sensors to be able to read the terrain that's coming before it and then having that predictive ability to send that information to the snowmobile to make it react accordingly to what obstacles are coming. With a semi-active, basically, uh, like we explained, uh, it's basically more more reactive. Okay. So, uh, you know, as the terrain is coming, it's reading everything, getting in all that input, and then sending that back to the to the uh, the control unit, basically controlling the calibrations of the suspension. So, as opposed to predicting what the terrain is going to be it's reacting to what the train is that it's reading. Yep. Okay, exactly. interesting. That, uh, that definitely clears up that question for sure. One of our Instagram followers, uh, he goes by the name Hot Coffee. I could definitely use a coffee right now. <laughs> uh, and what he wants to know is if there is ever a failure in the system, and I know we've talked about the system is designed to be extremely robust, but if by some fluke there was a sensor failure or a power failure or something, what does the system do and what does it default to? Well, that's a really good question. And, um, you know, as you mentioned, it's been designed so that there won't be any uh, failures. And, you know, it's been, it's been uh, designed to be uh, super reliable. We've done a lot of testing. We've done uh, many, 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 many hours of, uh, of track testing and uh, put it through a lot of uh, beating and wear and tear. So we're very confident on the quality. Now, if something should happen, uh, you know, whatever, it would revert to the stiffest setting. So depending where, where, the, uh, where the issue is coming from, if it's coming from the front suspension, then the, of course the, the front suspension would revert to the stiffest setting, but you would still uh, keep the, the smart shock features in the back suspension and vice versa. Right. And if, you know, if it's really all over, you know, something, I don't know, there's been something catastrophic going on, then it would be everywhere but to the stiffest setting. Okay, very interesting. And that's, that's exactly what he wanted to know was just what does happen. And uh, our experience with the system is that it's been very durable. So I'm sure that's never going to be a problem, but uh, hot coffee, now you know. Now, the final question I've got for you is, um, it's one that, We've, we've been curious about with the rebound in particular, and, and when you've got a, an adjustable, auto-adjusting rebound system, what happens when you adjust the spring rate? So if you crank up your springs, obviously that's gonna cause the suspension to rebound faster. Um, is, it, does the system know that that's happening? Can it see that the shock shaft is rebounding faster than it was before and make adjustments? Or would you have to do something like revalving the suspension to compensate? Well, it will. It will. Uh, it will be able to notice those those differences. So if you've uh, you've tuned a little bit uh, your your system, it will be it will be able to see that uh, they're they're basically uh, the dampening has has changed, and it will react accordingly. So the system will know and will be able to adapt uh, to the changes that have been made. So it's going to sense the shock extending quickly or more quickly quickly than it thinks it should and it's going to slow it down automatically to compensate for your spring rate exactly well, that's that's a it's a very smart system <laughs> right on well thank you very much for your time robin we we appreciated it this was very interesting and answered a lot of the questions that we did have about smart shocks obviously in this case on the mxz xrs 850 for 2022 um to our viewers, make sure you stay tuned because this is just one of the four-part series that we've got coming for you guys and we've got lots more information coming up.